coming. Uh, this will be a good program, and I think we'll all learn something. And so uh, uh, I want to make sure that, uh, that we have enough time to get it all done. The, uh, you've got a program, I'm assuming. Yeah. We'll pick one up. Now, the first, uh, the first <coughs> item on today's agenda is a uh, tribute to uh, uh, Julius Rosenwald and Booker T. Washington, who happened to be here tonight. Um, we've got Roger Rossman that's uh, over there on the left. He's an associate professor at COA. We've got Michael Bontore Bontour, uh, from Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity. Uh, and they are prepared to, uh, to introduce you to uh, Mr. Rosenwald and Booker T. Washington. Gentlemen, you have the floor. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Mike Montour, I'm member of the Epsilon Icon and Andy Tap at Alpha Phi Fraternity Incorporated right here in Elizabeth City. So um, to get into this monologue, I would like to start off with a poem I wrote. Um, it's called Facts, and since it is Black History Month, I thought I should state some facts. So here it goes. Sunsets and sunrises of pain for centuries is what my people see. Broken spirits followed by broken bones. We were packaged and shipped like animals to a hell of a home. Taken out of our comfort zone, we were traded like cards you collect for the next man to neglect and show even less respect. I mean, we were placed in heat stress, harvesting crops that we couldn't even use to put a shirt on our back. Now, it might be off track, but really was spot on, because holding shirts from webs on our back became life's uniform. Well, speaking your mind or reading books will get you hung like charms. I think it's time to ring the alarm. See, it's a new day, but we're still on the same trip. All it would take is for us two to stand up, and we can make this whole world shift. And that's facts. Good evening, Mr. Washington. My name is Julius Rosenwald. And my friend Henry Goldman from Goldman Sachs, one of us to meet. Nice to meet you, Mr. Rosenwald. Mr. Goldman and I were at a luncheon that President Roosevelt held at the White House. We were discussing the plight of the Negro in the United States. Your name came up in many discussions that we were having, so I'm finally glad to meet you. Yes, well, Henry thought that you and I would find common ground if we met, and I must agree, he was correct. Especially now that I understand how the Negro people have suffered from the same prejudice and discrimination that my people, the Jewish people, have suffered for so many centuries. And for that reason, I would like to help the, the Negro community the same way that I help the Jewish community. Well, that's great. As the leading voice for former slaves and their descendants, I would like our people, the Negro people, to focus on economic growth and education. We have children in the South that are suffering from inadequate books as well as inadequate schools. I understand your point. And uh, I think I could do something about that. I could provide some funds to create six small schools in rural Alabama. I only ask that these schools be designed by Tuskegee Institute staff. That's great. As a matter of fact, the faculty and I have already been discussing building schools for young black children. The blueprints will be done in a couple of months, I believe. To boost economic growth, we can have black men in our communities help build them. Excellent. Six years go by. <laughs> Booker, it has been a pleasure to work with you for the last six years. years. Watching these six schools be built and staff and the communities that have built up around them, I've decided to establish the Rosenwald Fund. The monies from this fund will go to helping to educate the Negro children in the rural South, as well as other states in the Union. I only ask that the monies for this fund be tied to matching grants and that the white school boards commit to maintaining those buildings and that Black members in the societies that they are growing up in are paid to aid in the construction. That's great. Julius here was the president of Sears and Roebuck Company and funded the construction of more than 4,977 schools for African Americans in the United States, of which he also helped me with the construction of more than 813 schools here in North Carolina. There were more, there were several schools even right here in Elizabeth City, North Carolina.
Now we're going to get started, okay? So it's a prayer. <laughs> Dr. Richard Boone. Holy Father, we are gathered here today for one single purpose, to give you honor. And then, Lord, we ask that you will be here with us. Because you said in your word, where two or three are gathered in your name, you will be there also. The song says, lift any voice and sing. Your word says, praise the Lord at all times. Thank you, Lord, for being here. Continue to guide, protect, and lead us always. Amen. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Um, I have the privilege tonight to introduce tonight's speaker. Uh, Melissa Sutton is Assistant Professor of African American History at the illustrious CCSU. Without further ado, I present to you Dr. Melissa Sutton. As you can see, the title of it is the Northeastern North Carolina African American Research and Cultural Heritage Center. It is a long name that I did not make up myself. How many of you attended a Rosenwald school that you know is a Rosenwald school? Wonderful. That is fantastic. I bet you. I suspect that there are more people in this room who have attended Rosenwald School who don't know it. Um, as I started to do the work of putting this project together, there are so many people on campus that are part of that and touch hands and see, uh, see the application from administrative assistants all the way through the chancellor's office. And uh, one of my departmental administrative assistants, as she's looking at the paperwork and, and helping me to process it, says to me, well, I didn't attend Rosenthal School, and I just looked at her and I said, I bet you did, right? <laughs> so to begin with, uh, ECSU has a historic district, the Elizabeth City State Teachers College Historic District. And uh, am I speaking loud enough, by the way, folks in the back? No. Yeah, great. Here, yeah. Thank you. Uh, within that historic district, there are several assets, one of them, or two of them being this Rosenwald School building, which was a stop I built in 1921, and what we call the Principal's House, which has been the home of ECSU leadership from 1923, when we had a principal all the way through some of our chancellors uh, from the 1990s. Uh, similarly, the Rosenwald School has had a long history. It was actually only, this particular building was only used as a classroom space uh, or uh, for a relatively short amount of time, given the kinds of Rosenwald School longevity there are in the other parts of the, of, uh, the region. Uh, a larger one was built across the street. So, uh, but this one was the original. It's a three-teacher schoolhouse, and it was used as a what we call a practice school, or a model school, or a training school. As you all know, Elizabeth City State began its life as a normal school, right? So it was a teaching institution designed to train young folk to go out and be teachers, right? Uh, they needed, just like they need today, they needed to practice their craft. And that is what that schoolhouse represents, is young African-American children in the Elizabeth City community getting primary school education uh, at the hands of, or you know, at the, the leadership of young student teachers and their supervisors, their teaching professors. Uh, it's quite rare, actually, to have a Rosenwald school on a college campus. So we have uh, intact a real jewel in that respect uh, in Northeastern North Carolina, in this region. Uh, there was, I, I, I've been able to identify nationally in the 15 states that there were Rosenwald schools about three others. So this is something that's quite special. And again, because it's on a college campus rather than being in a local community, even though we outgrew this space, this remained valuable property and usable property. So uh, it's had a, a uh, multiple lives. You guys can tell me now the history of the relationship between Booker T. Washington and Julius Rosenwald. Uh, there are a few things that I would add to the story that I think are interesting. One is that these plans that uh, the, the, the faculty at Tuskegee came up with 
were actually open to everybody. They were available to everyone. So it's entirely possible that you will see a little old school house that maybe used to be white and now is kind of peeling into decay. That was not a Rosenwald school officially, but was built with Rosenwald school plans. So this is a kind of a prototypical schoolhouse, right? There are there were uh, plans for one one school or one teacher schools all the way through up to ten teacher schools and high schools. So there were different plans. They were open to anyone. They were free. The school Anything. boards were also required to pay the teachers. So the teachers had to have a decent wage, a living wage, uh, and that was another requirement. So when I think about the project that we're working on at UCSU to rehabilitate these two buildings and to use them to create a, a research center and a cultural heritage center, uh, we are really embodying a lot of the principles that created and made possible Rosenwald schools across the name or across the, the American South. So I need to skip this one, but this is obviously Julius Rosenwald in Booker T. Washington. Uh, this map gives you a sense of the density where these Rosenwald schools are. North Carolina is, well, Virginia is the northernmost there, Virginia and Maryland, and you can kind of see where North Carolina is. This region, what's really important about this map though, is that really, really large, dense, black space, that's here. That's here. We have more Rosenwald schools here than anywhere else in our state. To take. Our goal is to help um, to preserve. So we want to have things like history harvests. Maybe we can even have them in, you know, in, at the library in addition to on campus, where you can come in and have, you know, have a conversation about your your your. Uh, that picture or that diploma or record that story uh, and then we would be able to you know if you want to give it to us that's great but the other thing is we can give you that acid free folder that will help to protect that item so that it doesn't decay so it doesn't crumble or fall apart I wanted to uh, just sort of list a few of the more local Rosenwald schools in addition to the practice school and uh, the, the city school there were there's a school in Salem Township. This university in Nashville, Tennessee has a collection of the Rosenwald School papers, and within that collection, they, they've created a database where you can simply uh, type in your county and your state and get a list of the Rosenwald schools that we're in. So that's where I'm getting this information from. Um, our Rosenwald School, which you've seen an image of already, was originally right next door to the principal's house. And in 1953, it was moved to another place on campus. And I'm going to run campus. Our goal, and this is what you have uh, all at your chairs, is to bring our Rosenwald School back home to its original location. It was originally right next door to the principal's house in a space that is now a parking lot. Uh, in order to move it, we have to do what we're required to do an archaeological dig got these Rosenwald schools, there's more than 200 in this region alone, out of the 800 across the state, we want it to be a community space, a gathering space. Um, it also, you know, there are some heads that, this is really important to think about, this is a space that can draw folk from away from here, here, right? So it's something that can uh, boost tourism. And what have we done? We've done a lot of things. Things happened before I was here. Starting in fall 2016, uh, when folks on campus started to think, what are we going to do with these buildings? And how do we engage our local community with that? Uh, we came up with this concept of you know, bringing together the Rosenwald School and the principal's house, moving that Rosenwald School, uh, and creating this center out of those two buildings right next to each other. Now, what kind of work does this school need done? They have a little water. Funny that, right? <laughs> so, a rainy day in December, I got on my uh, waterproof shoes and went out to the school to get some pictures of some of our water. Uh, because this is an older building on campus and it's surrounded by some newer buildings, uh, the priority in terms of 
landscaping and grading was to have water drain away from our Newwood dormitory. Uh, so this particular building, uh, the Rosenwald School, kind of bore the, the unintended consequence of that being the place where the water's running towards, right? So we need to work on that, and that's something that we can start to work on on campus. So there's some water pooling underneath the building, water by the AC unit between the building and the AC unit. There's water in that way, so that's something we need to work on. <laughs> so I'm happy to take any questions that we have. Yes? Is there a map of uh, where the school is going to be? Uh, so there's that fuzzy map. Mm -hmm. Specifically? There is a mapping project. So I that was something that's been that with the state. Let me put it back on the final page and not do that. Um, but that the state uh, has been, the state historic uh, preservation office has been working on, Chabot, is creating. But it's one of those things where they want us to be like, oh, there's a Rosenwald School here. So active mapping project, it's probably not perfect. Uh, and one of the uh, responsibilities, challenges, and opportunities that I have is to connect with folk all over the place who are shepherding the Rosenwald schools in their communities and identifying where those places are. So I'm so thankful <laughs> uh, to be in front of all of you and uh, to continue this work with all of you. Thank you. Princeton and Yale was it to be? They play football. They invented football. The uh, <laughs> Dr. Brown has something he wants to present. Good evening. Good evening. Let's give a round. Of You appreciate what you see, you see what you're doing, and I think that it's just wonderful what you're doing. So, on behalf of me, I'm very bored. We present this to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All of you know Jackie uh, King, and uh, she uh, she hates to speak. And, and so right now she's in fear that I'll say, Jackie, come on up here and say <laughs> Jackie does do a good job of keeping the library active and involved, and uh, and Black History Month wouldn't be the same in Elizabeth City without her. So <laughs> and her staff, as you can see, she gets them all involved, and they, and I think they enjoy working with her. Yeah, thank you. And that concludes our prepared remarks.